In 1938, the British introduced a light monoplane called the Westland Lysander, which could be used for communication and carry 420-pound bombs and one 500-pound bomb for low-intensity bombing missions. After the outbreak of World War II, the British deployed this aircraft on the battlefield. As a small aircraft, it had excellent maneuverability and utilized technologies such as automatic flaps and slotted flaps. It had a short takeoff and landing distance and performed well at low speeds, making it suitable for various miscellaneous tasks. However, it had weaknesses in self-defense capabilities, with only two forward-firing .303 machine guns, resulting in significant losses in combat. To enhance the aircraft's survivability, Westland began a modification project to strengthen its self-defense firepower, resulting in the peculiar-looking Westland Lysander P.12. During combat, the Lysander aircraft often fell victim to tail attacks from German fighter planes. Faced with agile fighters, the aircraft had little hope of escape and lacked any means of retaliation without a rear gun. Therefore, the designers emphasized the aircraft's rear self-defense firepower. The P.12 adopted a tandem wing structure, with front and rear lifting wings. The front half of the aircraft remained unchanged, with a single engine in the nose, gullwing main wings, and a welded frame. The main changes were focused on the tail. The designers installed a hydraulic-powered turret developed jointly by Nash & Thompson Engineering Company at the rear of the aircraft. The turret housed for 7.7mm machine guns, with the gunner operating the turret to rotate and fire. This turret series was also installed on Lancaster bombers. However, the Lancaster was a large aircraft, and the turret's installation on a light aircraft was cumbersome. This is where the advantage of the tandem wing design came into play. The large lifting surface of the rear wing ensured tail lift, and the vertical tail positioned at the wingtip provided sufficient firing space for the turret. This aircraft completed wind tunnel tests in July 1941 and subsequently built a prototype for testing. The overall test results were satisfactory, with pilots noting that the aircraft became maneuverable only at a certain speed, but became less maneuverable as it approached its maximum speed. At that time, Britain was also facing the possibility of the German Cillian plan, which involved landing operations on the British Isles. Therefore, the P.12 aircraft was also assigned the task of night operations. If a counter-landing battle did occur, it would carry small bombs to attack beachhead targets or ships at night. It would also strafe ground targets with its rear turret. Although this type of operation did not cause as much damage as heavy bombers with large bombs, if multiple aircraft were deployed simultaneously, it would be enough to give ground forces a hard time. As time went on, the British Air Force gradually solidified its position in aerial combat, and the likelihood of German landing operations decreased. As a result, the demand for the P.12 decreased as well. The project was delayed until 1944, by which time the situation of World War II had become clear, and the Allied forces had air superiority in Europe, with many other aircraft options available. The need for the P.12, a peculiar-looking makeshift modified aircraft, was no longer necessary. The P.12 turret fighter had an empty weight of about 1860 kilograms and a maximum takeoff weight of about 2640 kilograms. It had a two-person crew, with a length of 8.41 meters, height of 4.42 meters, and wingspan of 15.24 meters. It was powered by a 950-horsepower piston engine. The prototype's maximum speed was 341 km per hour, and its maximum altitude was 6,550 meters. In addition to the four machine guns in the rear turret, the weapons could also be replaced with 220mm cannons or 420mm cannons.